Hello, it's me, the sleepy Yornia. <laughs> Leona again. <laughs> Trying to rack my ba brain for some Sherlock Holmes puzzles. How many times am I going to press E? <laughs> How many? Ooh, let's move some stuff off my desk so I can actually use my mouse. You know what? I'm excited for Dragon Age. I've said it. I watched a, I watched a video about so, somebody who'd played it and honestly I was disappointed. <laughs> but I'm just so excited for it that there's a new Dragon Age game. Yes, I'm yawning again. Let's get the game up, this one. So we have to go to the police station. That was the thing we promised we'd do at the end of the stream. Okay, intentional E, because I think I can just fast travel potentially to the police station. And not fuss. And then that guy's gonna make those harnesses for us. Meanwhile, someone's been murdered again. Will you? Yes. Hey, Doctor, you seem tired. Were you wandering the darker parts of Whitechapel all night? You could say that. I have some information on Leather Apron, the man of whom we spoke earlier. Do you know where he is? No, but I can clear him of the Bucks Row crime. A witness proved him totally innocent. Oh, Watson, Watson, is it only now, after many hours of walking, that you decide to pass on the important message that Inspector Abilene is waiting for? Shut up, Sherlock. Um, no. But what are you doing here, Holmes? I was worried, Watson, and with good reason it would appear. Go give the message to this policeman and let's go home. Nobody appreciates me hanging around here, you know, and it's freezing cold. Ah, Cradle, none too soon. You will take the testimony of this. No, you continue with your duty shift. I must find Chowder in Ambry Street. He's struck again. Who? The murderer, the Bucks Row assassin. Hanbury Street. Let's go, Watson. We have no time to lose. Why do I have to go with you? Hanbury Street. Let's go, Watson. We have no time to lose. I prefer being Watson. You can go in, Mr. Holmes. She's there. We didn't touch a thing. It was very good of PC Chandler to let us pass. He said no one has touched the corpse. It's the perfect opportunity for us to put our. He's way too excited about this. Watson, let's not waste it. Ugh. Oh, let's lean back. This is a lean back in your chair game. Scrap of envelope. Okay. A torn envelope. It smells of rubbing alcohol. It contains three pills. I will take one. Two should suffice for the police. I thought you meant he was going to swallow the pill.
Oh, that's an... Uh... So, Doctor, shall we examine our victim? Ah, oh, I'm tired, Holmes. I'm not sure if <laughs> Same, I'm in the state Watson. to do this work. Come, Watson, there's little time. Show me what you're made of. Oh, my God. Pray, Watson, pull yourself together. Can you establish the time of the crime? Watson has a something called of the empathy. The cold and rigor mortis is beginning to set in. I would say that the murder was committed over two hours ago, before 4.30 a.m. Okay. Looky here. It would seem he has a mark on his left hand. He? This is a woman. The victim must have worn a large ring or several little ones, and someone pulled them off forcefully. This detail will be very valuable, Watson. You can be sure of that. Okay. Now, let's look at the stomach, or at least what remains of it. It's dreadful, Holmes. Who could do that to someone? That's what you're here for, Watson. Tell me what this man has done. The stomach has been entirely opened and... Oh, my God. A number of organs have been removed. So, you're telling me that the organs were removed, Watson. They weren't ripped out. Not at all, Holmes. On the contrary, this is clearly the work of an expert. I couldn't have done any better myself. And the uterus is missing. Damn. Let's look at this poor woman more closely. A the bruise. bruises again. The victim's face appears to have bruising, wouldn't you say? I look at her neck. What can you tell me? There are two incisions. Look at her neck. What can you tell me? There are two incisions. Okay. Oh, we haven't finished her face, apparently. Is it a tongue again? The tongue is swollen. I think that's what happens if you get choked. I think. Intentional E. Deductions, okay. The tongue. I can't remember. Whoa. Ah! Ah! Hi, Fart Bubbler. <laughs> Boo. Spooked me. You spooked me indeed. I'm easily spooked though. How's it going? Doing more deducing. It's called and at the extremities and rigor mortis has barely started. The crime was committed barely two hours ago. 
I am. The clocks went back last night, so extra hour in bed, except I just woke up earlier instead. <laughs> Large, recent large scrape on the first phalanx of the middle finger. The, the victim wall rings. They must have been stolen. I don't know why it makes me put these in the boxes when it just auto puts them in. Hi, EAL. Nice to see you again. How are you getting on with this game? Are you still playing it? Organs are missing. The uterus was removed by the hands of an expert. I don't know. How do we deduce that? Sure, um, how far are you in? Just a little behind. Okay. Yeah, we've got a new murder victim. Someone's killing the knowledge. Yeah, he's got to have a knowledge of anatomy. Also, I'm helped by my knowledge of these actual cases. I know that he must have had knowledge of anatomy and that he stole organs. How art thou? How art me? Uh, I'm good, thank you. I'm a bit sleepy, but... Honestly, when am I not sleepy? It's just my eye. Honestly, it's just my eyes. I say as I yawn because I play too many video games. Uh, how are you? Need a good spa session. Nah, I can't, I just can't relax. When I go on holiday, like, even when I'm relaxing, meant to be relaxing, I'm just darting all over the place. I don't, I don't know. He wanted to behead her, maybe? I'm sure glad it gives you the right answers. <laughs> I sure am happy. Let's get back in first person. Oh, look at this. This door must lead to the cellar. The latch has been recently repaired. Okay. Ooh, I would like dessert. I have none though. <laughs> Sad. No dessert for me. Until my birthday. <laughs> hmm. I have nothing to ask. Good for you. What's this? This apron is soaked with water and has left a clear mark on the ground. It must have been left in water for several hours and has been there for some time. Oh, there's the blood. The blood. Oh. So we've looked at her hands and body. Okay, I don't think we need to look. Oh, these. A piece of coarse muslin. Two combs, curiously arranged. Ooh, we've got a clue. I wanted to look at the blood. Is that there? The blood yeah, is a dozen there. inches or so from the ground. Blood stains on the wall. Okay. Good. Good for me. This fence separates the courtyard from the neighbours, 27 Hanbury Street. What a stench! Nobody is hiding inside. Well, well they might be. Well, it's just not checking because it stinks. That sounds like... You're just going to let criminals get away with it. <laughs> intentional E. I love how I have to say it's intentional now because I kept mistakenly pressing it. The blood. 
is a dozen inches off the ground, some blood spurted on the wall near the stairs. This means maybe still alive. I don't know. Oh, this is too complicated. Ambidextrous? I got this wrong then. Just right hand. I don't... right there we go <sighs> partially strangled and then had her throat slit so items at the victim's feet are very orderly uh, I don't know Imagine they were hers. They searched her, yeah. She said the murderer motive was Combs. <laughs> It's all about the combs, I say. Are we going to do a re recreation with Watson again? What are we doing, Holmes? Put your makeup back on, Watson. Right, what am I missing? to ask. That's all done. Maybe we talk what to him. What do you think, Holmes? Oh, I think we're in trouble. Okay, that's still not a full comb. Okay, there are so no trails on the ground. There's no sign of a struggle. My dear Watson, now that we have found That's all our clues, nothing remains but to subject them to our most likely hypotheses in order to deduce the facts. Holmes is actually insufferable. <laughs> I actually hate him. Neither footsteps nor streaks of blood on the ground. The victim wasn't dragged. He's actually the worst, though, isn't he, in this game? Like, I don't think I hated him in the other Sherlock Holmes games I've played. I hear a noise coming from the street, Watson. The authorities are arriving. It's time for us to go. Holmes has been locked away in his room for days, always saying the same things. I'm thinking, Watson. Very good, Watson. As you wish, Watson. But I am thinking too, so much so that I can't sleep. Yeah, so Watson has Chapman. empathy. Good Lord. <laughs> Holmes is just a bit excited about the whole thing. Good, we're covering the, covering the bullet holes, that's nice. Holmes examined the broken jar that belonged to Finley's tenant. I wonder what this substance is. I don't recognise the odour. Formalin, Watson. This jar contained formalin. Interesting, don't you think? Hmm. I've been waiting for something for days. Just the tiniest What's bit of formalin? news that would make sense of this whole matter. But there's nothing, neither from the press nor the police. I'm Unless it. Inspector Abeline is holding on to some information without realising its importance, which is quite possible. 
It is time for you to return to the police station in Whitechapel, Watson. And didn't you tell me that you had a matter to take care of it? Take advantage of it to learn more about this pill and its contents. Ah, but Holmes, it's late. And spending another night in this district is hardly my it's idea. It's an industrial of disinfectant I know, Doctor, and as a but preservative in funeral homes. Against us. Take your pistol in case you run into any troublesome characters. Fine, as you wish, Holmes. I swear to God, if this turns into a shooter, it's, it's over. <laughs> I have no reason to go that way. Well, where are we going? I wasn't listening. <laughs> go to the police station. We, we've got to get those um, harnesses for that guy still. Intentional E. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Okay, yep. Yeah, he's just telling us to finish our business. Uh, intentional E, and we're going to fast travel because I want to. <laughs> it's way quicker. Oh, that was not an intentional E. Uh, I'm going to keep my finger off it. But it's just so used to being there. Good evening, Mr. Solomonovich. Good evening, Doctor. What a pleasure to see you again. Tell me, did John Pizer turn himself in to the police? Things unfolded as they should. Look in the newspaper, the daily news from today. Have you finished converting the harnesses? Yes, just now. I got a little behind because of all the commotion. What commotion? commotion? Don't you start. Three days ago, the very afternoon that you passed by, there was a chase throughout the neighborhood. Hundreds of people were chasing one man, claiming he was responsible for the murders these last few days. Schmonz! It was awful! I hope those maniacs didn't catch him. Better the police should. Farewell, Isaac. Goodbye, Doctor. This this guy is very sensible and kind of nice. It's him, isn't it? <laughs> There is good reason why, without prejudice to the case of the man who is now in custody, the police public acceptance of the ma maniacal theory should be endorsed and encouraged. These are so bad. <laughs> there is positive danger in the growth of any other opinion at present in Whitechapel. As we have said, the mutilation of bodies, excepting in rare cases to further the murderer's chances of safety, is foreign to the English style in crime. There is a disposition at once, therefore, to set down such atrocities to the credit of some ill-bred and ill-nourished foreigner from which the from the lowest dens of vice in Europe. Yeah, nobody nobody knew where this game was set. So in Whitechapel there was a rising a murder murmur of ugly foreboding for some of the foreign elements there. Sheer rumour of silliest kind was beginning to take an odious position and there was a rising in the east end a a Juden hells more abhorrent than that from which abroad is due to religious fanaticism i don't know what any of that means and this is really hard to read basically they're saying people are attacking anyone who's not english because they think it must be them which is fantastic you love to see it They've got to be real newspaper articles because they're so long-winded. Good evening, Doctor. Back Gibbon. when people Dr. had Watson. attention attention spans. <laughs> Did you keep the cane we spoke of last time? I was going to sell it tomorrow. Would you believe, having not heard word? You dodgy criminal! <laughs> Do you have any formalin here? No, definitely not. They have it in university hospitals to conserve anatomical specimens in jars. But in a little clinic like mine, we don't keep anything but bad memories. Also, there's just no way when this game was set, someone with his accent would well, be a doctor. Well, farewell, Doctor. Goodbye, Doctor Watson. I must Hello, Finny. You're bursting. Oh my goodness, you're all wet. He's soaking wet because he's been swimming. Yes, Doctor? 
Here are your harnesses, Doctor. They are top quality, I'd say. Definitely worth the prize of this walking stick. Here, it's yours. Well, it wasn't well, yours farewell, anyway, Doctor. so... Goodbye, Doctor Watson. I must go to Miss Bellows. <laughs> Intentional E. Right, let's go and take it to that guy. I'm gonna shut the door again because it keeps the room warm. Because if anybody burst in. Oh, oh, I'm going the wrong way, and that was not an intentional E. Let's go. And then she'll tell us more about that doctor, right? Uh, come on. Intentional E to get this cane. Good evening, ma'am. Um, your door was open. Isn't that a little dangerous? Hello, Doctor. Don't worry, if the looks of anyone who enters doesn't please me, me and my pistol know how to convince them to leave. I found the cane that was stolen from your client. Here it is. Doctor, you are a real saint, I can see that. I'll finally be able to present my bill to this damned painter. If by chance you see him, yeah, I mean this isn't the, the Wild West. Him here. <laughs> I don't know if any if like I think Sherlock Holmes would have have access to guns, but it would be like a hunting rifle. I don't think just everybody would <laughs> in Victorian England. You told me you would give me some information on this Doctor Tumblety. Agreed. He's a Canadian or an American. He parades from time to time through the neighborhood in a 50 guinea suit and acts like a doctor. But for business, he isn't worth it. This damn Yankee hates women. The few times that he was approached by the girls, he spit on them, all the while hurling Hi, insults. It would seem that he was hunting for the bad boys. He's looking for trouble, that animal. Does he frequent any pub in particular? Aye, the wasp's no. <laughs> nest on Burner Street, I think. There is no winning if you're playing. By our standards. If you're playing this game, there's Do no winning. Do you happen to know Annie Chapman, the poor woman who was killed three days ago? Dark Annie? Pff, like all the drifters in the area, I've seen her once or twice. With respect to the dead, yeah. Annie really Only was suffering the available the today. What do you mean? Well, in our profession, the pretty young ones go out when night has barely fallen and don't have a problem finding takers. But poor girls like Annie or Polly Nichols, who aren't as tender and are often sick, sometimes trudge around for a whole night in the cold and the rain before landing a client. And that doesn't help their appearances either. They don't have much choice about paying for a bed for a few hours, a glass of gin or a hot meal. How terribly sad. That's the price of survival in Whitechapel, my angel. One of my girls knew Annie for some True. time. True. I will Had suffer for you, on the happily. Market, I think. Jewelry? How could Annie Chapman have possibly afforded jewelry? <laughs> Luxuries for a woman are always relative to her condition, Doctor. As a matter of fact, it was real cheap junk. Annie got three assorted brass rings, I think. <laughs> and they were missing. I have a memory for jewelry. I'm, li I'm lying back. It's a lying back kind of game. Uh, Lucy. How is Lucy keeping? She's doing well, Doctor. But believe me, it won't last. Rare are the girls who can build a future in our profession. Very well. I shall let you... 
head back to work, Ma. See you soon, my love. Also, she just leaves that gun on the side. That's anybody could pick that up. <laughs> uh, did I give her the cane back? Oh, I must have because she, she, she squealed, intentional e, while I look. Oh, what, just remind me what she said. Is there more to the their deduction? Okay, out we go. I don't really know what we're supposed to do now. We have the pill. I, I do like the deduction part. I'm like, please give me more. <laughs> I just want to deduce. Good evening. I hope I'm not disturbing you. Not at all, Doctor. This man, Mr. Richardson, is a witness to the horrid affair at 29 Hanbury Street. The murder of Annie Chapman. We are discussing the relevance of his testimony. Awesome, a witness. You're probably not in a position to discuss it with me, but I would like to know more about what you call the relevance of this young man's Also, testimony. we're Watson and not no, Sherlock no Holmes, it's which is better. The testimony given by Mr. Richardson doesn't match the time of death given by the coroner, Dr. Phillips. What was the time of death, according to him? Before half four in the morning. I think that's what Watson said as well. My conclusions were the same. Were there any other conflicting testimonies? Well, two other witnesses summoned at the preliminary inquest gave testimony, but in these cases too, the times don't match. Do you remember what it was they said? I didn't question them myself. A colleague of mine took down their statements on paper, but on deciding they were of little use, he tore them up and threw them in the bin. There's no point in being bogged down with useless paperwork. I will take my leave, Humphreys. Goodbye, Doctor. Tell me your testimony. May I introduce myself? I'm Dr. Watson. I am... You want to be the chap what writes the detective stories in that there paper? Well, yes, indeed. My stories have been published in the Strand. Go oh, blimey, wanna tell me, old mum? It would seem your testimony is the subject of some debate. Could you tell me what it was about? Ah, uh, they'll be telling you I'm a bit befuddled about the times that I told them. But it can't oh, be so. blimey! I knows what I sees and what I don't see that morning. What did you see, or what didn't you see? And at what time, would you say? I'll tell you this for nothing. It's me old mum who lives at the house where the body was found out back in the garden. She has her shop at the bottom to the right of the stairs. Her door was broken down not too far back because it's a real zoo it is. Right, the morning it happened... I head that way. Yeah, this is a point with the lads. The into. It was called five when I got there. That I'll swear on me dear old mum's life. I had At a the gaff. To see if the cellar had been taken. No. I had a little sit down on the stairs by the courtyard because my shoes were causing me no end of You're pain. right, gaffer. I, no. I didn't see a single thing below the steps, Doctor. Not one single thing. If there was some bird all covered in blood, taint no how I could have missed that, even if it were night time. Right. Five minutes after getting to number 29, I had to clip off. And now they tells me that either I can't tell time no more, or I was fixing me loafer next to a stiff that was still steaming. All right then, evening gents. I mean, I'm English and I got half of that. <laughs> give me, give me some handcuffs. Intentional E. Need to clip off. Hmm. Can we 
go to to that place again? Or I have no reason to go that way. Well, what am I supposed to do now? I've got a pill, but I'm not actually sure what to do with it. Maybe at the dispensary again? Maybe if I have it held, I can show it to him. Let's fast travel. Yes, Doctor? Oh, I need to... Well, Hi. farewell, Doctor. Goodbye, Doctor Watson. I'm off. I don't like this Doctor. He wouldn't give me that cane. And he's going to actually sell it. Yes, Not Doctor? Like... There you go. Could you tell me what type of pill this is? Yes, we have those here. It's not really a medication. We give them to patients with chronic respiratory conditions like tuberculosis. Did you have a patient by the name of Annie Chapman? The woman killed three days ago. Indeed. She came in the morning of her death. Poor woman. Did you give her these pills? Yes, now that I think of it. She actually came in twice. The first time I gave her an almost empty container without making her pay. She came back during the day and said she dropped the container and stepped on the pills. She wanted to know if I could give her more again without paying. I refused. After she left, a patient who was there told me that he lives at the same place and confided that she had been lying. He saw the pills fall in the tenement's communal kitchen, but the woman immediately wrapped them up in a piece of paper. Where did this paper come from? According to this man, she'd found it near the chimney in the kitchen. Anyone could have thrown that paper there. That envelope can't have anything to do with a murder. Pardon, Doctor? Uh, nothing. I was just talking to myself. Oh, Watson. You fool. Well, farewell, Doctor. Goodbye, Dr. Watson. Okay. Now I don't know what to do. <laughs> now I'm lost. Let's have a look. It's just, I feel like I have to keep going over what they say because a lot of it is irrelevant. <laughs> Hello, small child. I have nothing to ask. I've got nothing to ask you, so you're gonna have to be on the street. <laughs> Tell me, is it what? I know you. Oh, maybe we can ask the police about the pill. gone so I guess not yes doctor so how far along are the investigations into these two okay, recent we've got murders stuff to ask. everyone around here believes both crimes were committed by the same man but as for the Hanbury Street and Bucks Row crimes nobody has heard or seen a thing okay so how far along uh, are the in everyone but no the a slip of the mouse by the way have you heard of a Dr. Tumblety? Um, no. Is it important? Yes. Well, no, maybe. Actually, I don't know. I have heard about this man, his frequent nocturnal outings and bizarre behaviour. What does this chap look like, Doctor? And where can we find him? By the way, <gasps> have you... Uh, yes. What does this... 
The last I heard was that he was staying at Finley's place, the man who was looking for me a few days ago. It would greatly assist us if you could ask Finley what your strange associate looks like. We could then okay, see if I the description matches any witness accounts. Because I actually remember where it is. I will take is. my leave, Humphreys. Goodbye, Doctor. Look at Watson's little legs. Listen to him. Hmm. There is a strong smell of gas. It seems to be coming from the abandoned building. Well, that's not good. <laughs> good evening, Finley. How are you? Oh, good evening, Doctor. So, so. And you? It's pretty weird that you sweep this time of night. It smells of gas here. Ah, you might say, Doctor, without wanting to speak ill of the force, I have to wonder if the police are up to something. What do you mean? Well, I was outside yesterday evening when the light went out of my place, and a gas smell came from the abandoned building across from my place. And a minute later, the police arrived and were snooping all around like it was them who hit the gas before arriving. Hmm, so you think the police broke it so that they'd have reason to go in. That sounds like them. Have things sorted themselves out with your strange tenant? Don't talk about it, Doctor. That man is truly bizarre. He goes to the most sordid locations once night falls. Three days ago, my wife told me she saw him come in with blood-stained clothes and a fearsome look. There's a, mur there's a murder. There's a murderer going around. Why would... Why? <laughs> I know there's like East End loyalty, but this goes a bit far. Interesting. What does he look like and how old is he? Oh, he's my age, give or take. So, the other side of 50. He's always dressed in a striking manner with an American hat. He's big, close to 5'11", I'd say. He has a strange It's got to be Dr. Tim Dimbleti. His voice. Let's tell Pretty the police. Well. Goodbye for now, Finley. Goodbye, Doctor. An American hat. Now then, let's go to Worst the of all, he was, never mind the bloodstained clothes. An American hat. Yes, Doctor. Tumblety is a man around five foot eleven. About 55 years old, extravagantly dressed and with a rather distinctive voice. He boards at Finley's. You should know where that is, as the police were there only yesterday. Their arrival coincided with a strange gas leak. Oh, Tell them, yes, Watson. I know where you mean. Indeed, there was an odd affair with the gas. It was rather unsettling. We were searching for a well-known scoundrel who was ratted Ooh. out by Squibby. The chap we followed and saved from the pack a few days ago. This thug, no pity Bluto, must have been in the abandoned building. No pity in Bluto. But there was no sign of him when we arrived. Furthermore, an inspector said that, given the smell, the thingamabob that supplies gas to the building was probably damaged. So we took no risks and were called away somewhere else. Hmm. So you're saying the police I aren't will take dodgy, my eh? Goodbye, Doctor. I'm just going to go and turn the heating on because I am very cold. There we go. Oh. It's not that cold today, but it's just so damp. The air is so moist. <laughs> Should I go and look at that building then? Can I look further at it? It smells like gas though. Maybe we shouldn't. How 
a little looky. Anything else, Doc? No. Pretty well. Apparently not. Goodbye for now. Goodbye, Doctor. Hmm. Let me out of here. I'm Dr. Watson, let me out of here. I have no idea what to do now. Got no... No new deductions. Sherlock Holmes gets all the glory. Hmm, what to do now? Asking everybody, I guess. Yes, Doctor? No. Well, farewell, Doctor. Goodbye, well, Doctor. Well, I'm off. <laughs> Can anybody remember what we have left to do? I just don't I just don't know. Our good friend Isaac. What can I do for you, Doctor? Solomovich. Nothing. Farewell, Isaac. Goodbye, Doctor. He's got nothing for us. Um. Wait, what was that on the map? Oh, a pub. Let's go to the pub. The Hell wasp's yeah. nest. This pub looks even more disreputable than the Golden Lion in Baker Street. Is this the this is the American hat for sure? Good evening, sir. It'll be the cool of my career, Governor said. Ha! <laughs> You'll make loads oh, no, of he's English. paper, he said. Maybe not. He sounds English, but it You're looks a journalist? the hat's That's different. Uh, Tom Bulling at your service. <laughs> the Whitechapel ferret, the wizard with the scoop. You don't appear to be in a state to write anything, my friend. You're mistaken. Whiskey passes through the blood and turns into ink. Simple. <laughs> you see, I'm guessing American hat might don't be you think the you should murderer. Settle your tab and go home. My red ink? Where's my red ink? I won't even pay half a halfpenny if they don't return my red ink. It's my blood you hear. Stop giving people your blood then. Pretty well. I'll be on my way. <coughs> oh, is that the guy whose cane we found? I can't remember. Good evening, the... sir. Well, I know you. Why? We met at Miss Pullman's the other day. So you've come to slam it in Whitechapel, yeah. eh? Yeah. <laughs> That voice actor at least knows what game he's in, and he went for it, unlike some of the others. <laughs> Do you know Dr. Tumblety, a Canadian or American chap? Quite an extravagant dresser. It might Frequent be this guy. He's quite... Are he's an extravagant intimate? dresser. Um, no. What do you mean by that? Oh, nothing. Nothing at all. I just wanted to prove my discretion concerning this man. 
in so much and so far as I know him. You wouldn't like it if one day the tables were turned and everyone was talking about why you were in the borough. Isn't that so? Just tell me. As it happens, I saw Miss Pullman recently. She told me that she couldn't wait to see you again. She said something about a surprise that is waiting for you at her establishment. Why, that is some of the best news I've heard, my friend. As thanks, I would like to let you in on a secret. The man that you were talking about, and whom I happen to know by sight, passed by and went through that little door that you see over there. Another man let him in. They weren't together for more than a few minutes, to be sure, eh? Well, I will continue my search. Ah. Uh, he love. didn't even say thank you. He just but said. What is this person trying to imply? This matter is beyond me. He's trying to imply that you love the doctor, doctor. <laughs> Oi, what'll it be to drink, Gav? Gavna! Unintentional E. <laughs> Greetings, my good man. Could I have a pint? I would not be drinking anything this pub served. Here, Gov. I've been told that Dr. Tumblety might be found around here. Is that so? I don't do a roll call of all the drunkards here. I've got my hands full just <laughs> making sure they're the sun money. on me. It's the last thing my complexion needs. Don't people pay when they order? Nah, look at that little scribbler there. Completely dead drunk. Tonight's tally is about as long as his arm. If he skips out, I'll be in for a guinea almost. Goodbye, my friend. Oi, that's it. What? <laughs> I went too far. I called him my friend. Hey, you can't go in there. It's private. Got it? Fair enough. I guess we can get this the, distract him with this guy. <laughs> You're the best. The boss told me. My reading. Well, where's she be? Very well. I'll be on my way. <clears throat> I love him. We must protect. This is the sink where the barmaid puts the glasses to soak. Look, red ink. What's that doing here? The bottle Not is that. closed. There must still be some ink inside, and it looks like a glass. The barmaid must have put ink into the sink by mistake. Right. Do I get in your way? Me? If you'll excuse me, sir. What was he on about? I feel like he, that guy's just reading his ro lines in the wrong tone. <laughs> You're the oh, I should have Pretty it in well, my... I'll be on... I need to put it in my hand, don't I? It's a very annoying mechanic, this. You're the best. I found your red ink, my friend. You should settle up and head home. Thank you, my friend. Thank you. The spring-heeled chanson will be revived. Okay. I guess because we got that guy to pay, maybe he owes us now. This very aggressive barkeep. You Here paid you up. Go. It's on the journalist, my friend. I owe you one. The next one is on me. Will it be? Let me in Nothing, that door. Thanks, but I may need your help. <laughs> Let me in. What's behind that locked door over? Not likely. Okay, here we go. Listen, my friend, I would like you to let me in the door over there. You're a bobby, a peeler. Absolutely no. not, my friend. I am a doctor. Fine, I owe you this at least. There's a bloke behind that door there. No pity, Bluto. Let's just say he wants to lay low for a moment. 
So I don't think you'll be opening the door. A bobby just and a peeler. Now. Police. Unless, <laughs> he thought we were the you police. Have word from Squibby. That'll open the door. But who can say what'll happen when the door closes? I've got, I've got a gun. It's fine. Goodbye, my friend. Oi, that's it. That, that makes absolutely no sense. Let me in. I, I have news from Squibby. But stay calm. And who are you? Where's Squibby? He's out. To be honest, I don't actually know this Squibby chap. I was actually wondering <sighs> if you knew Dr. Tumblety. Why, Watson? A Canadian or American fellow. Why? He came in. Keep up the line. Sure we know him. Excellent. Can you... You know about gas? I'm afraid not. I am a doctor. Then I ain't interested. You can be leaving now. But if I find out he snitched to the peelers, I'll find you. Got it? But I can pay you for... Keep your coins for the paupers. Or one of the gas boys who ain't afraid of nothing and knows how to hold his tongue. You bring okay. it to me. I'll meet with you. We'll find a, a gas boy. <laughs> and I won't snitch to the peelers. Where am I going to get a gas boy? Maybe I'll, I'll need to ask around. The, the police? We snitch? We snitch? We run and snitch? Yes, Doctor. No, I no option to snitch. Goodbye, doctor. Uh, gas point. Where can we find? Maybe Finley will know. We'll ask everywhere. You're still there, Doc. Very well. I was thinking, I you know, get back to work. Mark. You might know you about soon, gas. <laughs> Owning a business, a businesswoman such as you might know about gas. We'll ask Finlay, since this is the gas house. Anything else, Doctor? No. Nope. Pretty well. Goodbye for now, Finlay. Goodbye, Doctor. Bye, Finlay. Let's have a look. Maybe... That's where we are now. Maybe... The cobbler? I don't know. What can he I knows. do for you, Doctor? He's got no people, no. Farewell, he doesn't... Isaac. Goodbye, Doctor. Where can I find a gas boy? The heck is a gas boy? The Doctor. And then we've asked everyone. I'm hungry. Yes, Doctor. Oh, God. Well, farewell, Doctor. Goodbye, Doctor Watson. Maybe we should have asked the pub guy. I don't think. I think that's like we didn't ask him. As we were leaving. The bartender, the aggressive bartender. Come here. Gal? Nope. Goodbye, my friend. Oi. Oi. You? What'll it be to drink, Gav? Hmm. 
what to do now. Or you, know anything about gas? Come, my lord. No. I don't know, maybe we're looking for like a little kid. There's one around here, I think. No, they just repeat. Hi Charlie, how's it going? I'm looking for a gas boy. Whatever that is. We might have to look this one up. A gassy boy, yeah. Finny Winnie's downstairs. <laughs> He's a gassy boy. The boy who ate the beans. Where are you? You, sir, you look like you ate the beans. Tell me, is it what are you looking for? Tricks, opium, a girl, sailor? No. I'm looking for a gassy boy. <laughs> None of those things. Or you, no gassy no, boy. No, it would be better not to insist. That doesn't make any sense, Watson. But good for you. Is it this corpse? Are you? A Oi, gassy boy. I have nothing to ask. Mm. That woman who stands there isn't there. We might need to look this up because it's boring going around all the time. Gas, I'm going to search this walkthrough for gas boy and hope it says something. No, no match, no match for gas boy. Gas, no even matches for gas. What kind of walkthrough is this? Maybe I'm on the wrong part because there's quite a few parts to this. Gas. Don't. Don't annoy me, internet. Oh, okay, we need to, we can go to the police station and do some stuff there. Some puzzles. Hopefully. They said there would be puzzles. Hmm, closed. Let me in. They said that there's a witness account puzzle to do. But maybe I'm not there yet. Finley, I did that. Inspect the bottle, yeah. Warp to White Chapel and talk to Isaac the Cobbler for the harnesses, chip back with the cleaning dog, swap the harnesses for the silver tip cane. Uh -huh. Return to Bella's brothel and return the cane, yeah. We went to the wasp's nest. As Watson goes to the police, 
talked to death sergeant and the witness and the sergeant a second time yeah we did that we talked to the witness head back to the police oh head to the finley's boarding house next chat with finley we did that head back to the police who are only good for triggering events and sitting on their fat asses that's what actually what this walkthrough says and then shoot for wasp nest pub in whitechapel As Watson entered the Wasnest pub, talked to the artist about tumble tea and the bartender as well. Grab a red bottle of ink at the end of the bar. Follow. Follow tumble tea through little door. But that's not what happened. Apparently there should be little scraps of oh these. Here yeah. are the ripped statements. I can piece them together again. Why would they rip them up? Oh dear, they flip. Oh flip. <laughs> it's gotta be like that though. Maybe. I'm not I'm not totally convinced. Okay. This looks good. This is <gasps> that looks good. Uh oh. Well, that can't be that then, can it? Uh, that. Honestly, just get lost. Get lost, you. Stop ru stop ruining it. Um, that's the one I just put it back. I'm going mad. There we go. There we go. There. What? How does this work, then? Okay, well those two go together, but... They don't fit, so I'm very confused. Maybe there's like two... bits of it? At least I managed to mute. Well, I never. Maybe it's like that, where there's two. No. Wrong, I say. Unless. Unless. Yeah. At 
Oh, it's not that one. It's got to be here somewhere. This is my kind of puzzle. Nice and peaceful. There, all done. Holmes couldn't have done better himself. On the morning of the murder, the witness left her domicile at 32 Church Street at approximately 5am to get to Spitalfields Market. She was passing down Hanbury Street at about 5.30am. The witness was certain of the time as she declares that she heard the clock at the back Black Eagle Brewery on Brick Lane strike the half hour just before she entered the street. In front of 29 Hanbury Street, she saw a man and a woman taking, talking. It should be noted that the witness identified the body of Annie Chapman at the morgue as being the aforementioned woman. This identification was solicited by our services. The man seen with the victim is described by the witness as follows, at least 40 years old, a little taller than the woman with whom he was discussing, approximately 5 feet 3 inches. Clothing was brown deer stalker hat, dark coat, a doubt on this point. General appearance of the working class. Particularly marking his dark hair and moustache, dark face, looks like a foreigner. The witness only saw the man from behind and wouldn't be able to recognise or identify him. The term foreigner is often associated with a person of Jewish origin. They're going to go after our boy Isaac. Rude. He's the only one who's been helpful and nice. The witness resides at 27 Hanbury Street, the building adjoining number 29 of the same street and the two respective backyards are separated by a wooden fence, tall and thin. On the morning of the murder, the witness got up at 5.15am and went into the yard where the latrine was. It was then 520 on going back into the house, the witness heard voices from behind, the fence coming from number 29. The only word that he understood was no. He went into the building again but returned to the yard approximately four minutes later, whereupon he heard a noise as if something fell against the fence. Hmm. He then departed for work when he passed in front of the Spitalfields church. It was approximately 5.30. If there's two witnesses saying they saw it at 5.30, then... Why, obviously have your doubts, but why tear up the testimony? You might need it. <laughs> okay. Oh, we're doing a close-up on the bin. Come point from the white plume, mountain inn, it's been Benny. Are these the suspects? All these other crimes. Oh no, these are arrests of people. An old report on arrests that took place a few years earlier. Well, it would seem that I have all the information I need for my investigation. Anyway, this fellow Bluto at the wasp's nest is rather shady and doesn't look like he'll want to cooperate. I like how we're like, nah. Be off returning to Baker Street. We're not going for the gas, Holmes boy. Will certainly know what to do. And besides, I am worn out.
Let's go. Let's go back to Baker Street. Home, sweet home. There we are, Holmes. I've told you in great detail everything that happened last night. Excellent work, Watson. We shall now be prepared to answer a few questions about the horrible murder in Hanbury Street. Do you think we are now in a position to find out the identity of the murderer of these two women? No, I don't think so. It's outside of our scope and not our responsibility. As much as you've done for Leather Apron and the affair with the pills, our mission is to help the police by ensuring that they don't get caught up following false leads and to point them in the right direction. Let us start from what we know with some certitude. As you have just said, it is almost certain that the same person killed the Bucks Row and Hanbury Street victims. The reason to assume as much are numerous and I shan't elaborate here. What do these two victims have in common? It's true these two women were in the same profession, but... Indeed, Watson. These two women were both prostitutes. That is of vital importance, Watson. Actually, My they weren't. From your examination so of the scene get lost, Sherlock Holmes. Hazy. Didn't you say something about the killer's frame of mind? I was talking about the victim's possessions that were placed on the ground and the rings missing from Annie Chapman's fingers. This killer is a cunning predator, comes from a rather humble background, and shows steely self-control in carrying out the murders. Something is puzzling me, Holmes. Richardson's testimony. Anyway, there's a fantastic the book called The Five Phillips about the it victims of Jadavarka. And about who they were. And yes, we shall confirm that, Watson, and attempt to determine the precise time of death. In order to do that, we will need to place everyone involved on a timeline. Only after that will we be able to place the knife symbolizing our killer. Let's they were basically only timeline, called Watson. prostitutes because they were living with men they weren't married to. I think only one of them was. Oh, now I'm Sherlock Holmes. Boo! <laughs> okay. But this is cool. Timeline. We left the station at six o'clock and it took us 20 minutes to arrive at Hanbury Street. Oops. I keep doing that. You meant to Let's put the time of death as assessed by Dr. Phillips on the timeline. The assessment of the time of the murder given by Dr. Phillips and yourself, Watson, 4.30 Very scandalous. Okay, we have nothing else to go off, so... We haven't discovered the other clues. Oh my god, Watson, why are you so close? What are we doing, Holmes? Honestly, who knows? Okay, but we don't have any... <laughs> we only have two pieces of evidence, so I don't really... Oh, so that one's right. Wait. What time did we arrive? Six twenty, actually, I think it was. Oh, God. Oh, Christ. We left the station at... Six... Our arrival there. at the scene occurred at around 6.20. Given the distance separating the two locations, we can deduce that the corpse wasn't discovered after 6 o'clock and therefore that the murder must have been committed before. Very clever. 
Ah, the murder must have occurred before the body was dead. <laughs> Good one. Good one, Sherlock. This is why I hate you. What do you think, Holmes? I think we know nothing. Just like we know nothing about the real <laughs> case of Jack the Ripper. I wonder who they're actually going to pin it on. It'll be interesting. Okay, I always need help with these bits because... They're hard. Okay, for some reason there's only... So in the walkthrough, all these other, other ones are filled in. There is nothing more to do here. But they're not for me. Uh, I guess I choose one. Uh. Testimony, testimony. Put them on, okay. I see. And then we need two bits of evidence. From probably from this guy. Or maybe not. I have no idea which one, one of these. Let's just put what we know on. <laughs> Check. Yeah, it should be that guy's testimony, Richardson. That we spoke to but i don't know how to get it up here this is really not good oh well well Five thirty, she saw it. Now for the most important part, the testimony of Miss Long. She claims to have seen a woman speaking to a man near twenty nine Hanbury Street sometime around what time, Watson? Five thirty. Let us assume, therefore, that Miss Long's testimony is, as is most certainly the case, true. She places her meeting with the victim at around 5.30, claiming to have heard a clock chime on the half hour at the moment when she enters the street. What if it was 4.30? What if the clock's changed, huh? Mr. Oh my gosh. Uh, 5.20. Oh. Five twenty when he's passed in front of the church. Our okay. next witness is Albert Kadosh. Five twenty. Albert Kadosh goes down into his garden at approximately five twenty, and on re-entering his home, hears voices in number twenty nine's garden. Mm, he leaves at five thirty two. Let's place this symbol that represents Kadosh on the timeline. 
Kadosh leaves the garden, enters his house, then leaves for work, seeing the clock on the Spitalfields church showing 5.32. So four minutes later, so five twenty four, I don't know. Very accurate. Let's place this symbol that represents Kadosh on the timeline. Kadosh goes back down into his garden approximately four minutes after having left it and hears the sound of an impact against the wooden fence. Oh my god. This is stupid. Walk through. It keeps refreshing. Stop it. I need to look at this, how to do this. I've got the times right by myself. I just don't know how to get Richardson's testimony. Yeah, it's about that Richardson guy. I just don't know how to get his testimony on here. Let's see if the help button does. Yeah, select from your inventory. Elong. That was nice and easy, putting that on there, but... Dialogues. How do I get this guy's testimony on there? God doesn't say how to, it just says. Oh, I'd put one too many things up there already. Okay. There we go. Right. Let's read the testimony. Quarter to five, he arrived. 5.50. Okay. Ah! Now, let's put the Richardson's arrival and departure times on the timeline. No? 42, was it? I, sh I meant that one. No? It was quarter to five, uh, quarter to five, not quarter to six. Quarter to five. Gosh, everyone gets up early. Now let's put the Richardson's arrival and departure times on the timeline. 
Despite the great respect I have for Dr. Phillips and the value I place on our friendship, my deepest conviction is that both of you are mistaken and that Richardson is in the right and that these two testimonies put down in writing have real worth. But how? Explain yourself, Holmes. Remember how you assessed the time of death? You touched the fingers and body of the victim, but it was remarkably cold for this time of year. In addition, the corpse had been drained of bodily fluids. Its heat retention was therefore no longer the same as that of an intact corpse. In Gad! You're right! How did Watson not get this? Watson, I was on your side. <laughs> Given these facts, my first diagnosis may have been off by half an hour. Perhaps even an hour. Thus, we can confirm Richardson's statement and establish that the murder was committed after 4.50 a.m. and not before 4.30 a.m. Excellent, Watson. All our people are now in place. Yes, but Holmes, Miss Long, claims to have seen the victim at around 5.30. But according to Caddo, the, the Watson someone, most voice actor the sounds familiar. Her murderer, I'm going to look him up. was already in the garden at 5.30. Excellent observation, Watson. It must be noted, however, that these two witnesses, Long and Kadosh, saw the time shown on the clocks in the area, which are often inaccurate and went by their empirical and, in this case, erroneous estimate of how much time had passed. Thus, so neither of these two times can be considered reliable. Do you mean to say that these two testimonies mm. might match? Indeed. Let's put Miss Long's meeting with the victim at two minutes before 5.30. Sherlock Holmes versus Jack the Ripper voice actors. Here we go. Doctor Watson. Oh my God! He vo voices them in all of them. That's m that might be why. Shark Holmes the Awakened, Shark Holmes versus Jack the Ripper, Sherlock Holmes Nemesis. One episode of Jonathan Creek. Very, very interesting. I want to know who who plays Sherlock Holmes. Oh my god, he's the same voice actor in Sherlock Holmes The Awakened uh, and Nemesis as well. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Let's add Miss Long's meeting with the victim at two minutes before 5.30am. Mr. Kadosh claims to have passed by the Spitalfields Church at 5.32, which, given the distance from 27 Hanbury Street, would mean he was still at home at 5.31. Let's therefore put the end of his testimony at 5.31. Miss Long heard the man say to the victim, Will you... To which the victim responded, Yes, which would suggest that an agreement was reached and that the transaction was imminent. They then proceeded to enter the garden, which puts the voices heard by Kadosh at 5.29. Oh my god, it's getting busy now. We Here had we thought that Kadosh had left 27 Hanbury Street at 5.31 after having heard an impact against the fence. Thus, two minutes passed between the moment when Kadosh entered the house after having been in the garden the first time and the moment when he returns to go out again and leave for work. How long did he estimate this interval to be? Three to four minutes. In light of all this, Watson, we can finally establish the time of Chapman's murder. Now, place the knife at the exact time. I don't know. <laughs> don't ask me. Don't ask me. Okay, let's have a look. She saw, they saw them, so it's got to happen just a little after this. Oh, just before that? 5.30? Five, five like, literally, is it? Now then, taking into account it that took the one minute isn't exact, and that a young man was off by a minute or two in his estimations of his comings and goings, we can confirm Miss Long's testimony and place the time of the crime at approximately 5.30. And the police tore up but this in testimony. Case, Holmes, the man that Miss Long saw is none other than... That's right, Watson. It was the Whitechapel killer. 
To think that Miss Long and Kadosh were only a few feet away from him. Indeed, Watson. Had Miss Long passed just a little closer to the victim and her assassin, or had the young Kadosh popped his head over the fence out of curiosity, the killer would most certainly already be behind or bars. Or he would have murdered That's them some too. some stroke of luck he had there. I couldn't agree more, Watson. But his luck didn't end there, given the mutilations inflicted upon this poor woman. Yeah, what he took a uterus out all in a couple of minutes. Obvious wish to remove one and only one specific organ. His surgery pinpointed the exact spot, avoiding superfluous incisions. This suggests the man possesses at least a minimal anatomical knowledge. Are you suggesting a, a doctor or a butcher? Perhaps, but the possibilities are still too broad to conclude with any certainty. Now for the motive. Despite my almost complete lack of practical experience on the subject, I have a rather precise idea of the usefulness of a uterus and a vagina. Nonetheless, once they are separated from their usual envelope, I am more circumspect as to the uses one can make of them. What do you think, Watson? You need a board, I don't Watson. know. Honestly, just don't listen to Sherlock. <laughs> He's nonsense. He's nonsensical. Why does what he have to speak do, like Holmes? that? We need a Let's... board, Watson. We need a board. Well, there's one, but you've kind of got it up. You've kind of got it covered. Just don't listen to it. Don't listen to him, Charlie. I'm looking. <laughs> okay. Yeah, you stay cuddly and warm like Finny. Oh, is it the motive board? I think it's the motive board. Okay, this one. There is nothing more to do here. What? That's what the, this is what the guide told me to do. Grab the board. Grab the board. It says grab the board. What board? <laughs> The walkthroughs of this game are so bad. Oh my god. Okay, apparently right clicking also takes you to the inventory. I'm just gonna... So, it, so the guide says we've got to redo the not this one the motives what board which is there this is nothing one more to do here but it's not done for me Uh, 
ask Sherlock, grab the board in the room and do the criteria for, for criteria for motive. I have. And so, Holmes, you need a board, Watson. Oh, this one. Okay, so we've got two boards. Okay. Perhaps it was intended as a study specimen. I have little faith in that theory. Hardly anything was taken from the Bucks Row victim. So for organ Money, trafficking. Quite simply. Even if this motive seems incongruous, we're in no position to deny or affirm it until we know whether a market for human organs exists. Uh, yeah, okay, Sherlock. Black magic? Watson, this line of investigation is far too vague. We don't have a single clue in support of such a motive. We can eliminate this hypothesis. A desire for some sort of morbid trophy. I'd be inclined to dismiss this motive. If this were the case, why would nothing have been removed from the Bucks Row victim? Okay, I don't really understand what dementia. Holmes, what if it was cannibalism? Even if the idea is unbearable, uh, we can't ignore it as a possibility. Elementary. What emerges from these possible motives for having removed the uterus from the second victim is that they implied that the killer could have carried out the same thing on the Bucks Row victim, yet didn't. This brings us to a terrible conclusion. Our killer has evolved in the space of only a few days, and if that's the case, had he already struck before the first murder to which we attribute him? And if the killer strikes again, what atrocity awaits his next victim? We have to stop him, Holmes. We shall do our best. This recent business of mm, we'll try. <laughs> formalin and of the American doctor we'll might a be a lead. Watson, inquire among medical circles to ascertain if there is a black market for human organs. The chances are slim, but this must be pursued. Very well. What about you, Holmes? I will send word to Inspector Abiline regarding our recent conclusions. I should also like to become a gas man and pay a visit to Bluto at the Wasp's Nest. There we go. Understood, Holmes. I think one of my old university colleagues who works at the London Hospital will be able to help me. I shall write him a note at once. He should be able to see me during the day. Afterwards, shall we meet here? Yes, Watson. See you later, and good luck. I must get to the London Hospital, where my old university colleague works. Yep. To the London, London Hospital, quick. My to the hospital. Agreed to meet me here in one of the London Hospital rooms reserved for students. Ah, John, you're there. Case already. is solved. Yeah. As always. End of stream. Tell me, you We're don't done. seem to be in good shape. Is it possible that your recent marriage is making you this morose? Ah, you know me well, Andrew. No, it's a strange and terrible affair that concerns me. Have you read my note? Yes, I admit that I was surprised. It just so happens that I too was asking questions about our morgue. What do you think? Have you heard of any organ trafficking within? No, no, John. No doubt there exists some exchange between colleagues. Not quite legal, of course, but nothing that can qualify as trafficking. Since the Anatomy Act of 1832, which permitted the use of unclaimed corpses for science, the black market trade was definitely halted. There are sufficient subjects available for all practitioners and students. At this, I can confirm. Well, organ trafficking as a lucrative trade is out of the question. Then what is troubling you with the morgue? You are talking about trafficking organs. But I suspect there is trade in whole bodies. Oh. What do you mean to say? Whole bodies are disappearing? Well, it's confidential, but I know of your discretion and your friendship with the famous Sherlock Holmes. I can tell you that a few corpses have recently disappeared from the hospital morgue. Cadavers that were intended for dissection. That is to say, not claimed. Poor, unknown people. 
If a single corpse had disappeared, it might have been a bad joke. There are many students who pass through here. It's even a meeting spot. For the majority, they are here to work. A few come here in secret to practice. It also happens that instruments or organs go missing. Nothing alarming, but so many corpses. It's very troubling. That is troubling. <laughs> but the hospital doctors aren't that doing That cannot anything? be good. <laughs> no. That is to say, they would prefer not to call the police at this point. An investigation would no doubt result in the suspension of authorizations for the use of unclaimed corpses. Do you think that you could intercede on our behalf with Sherlock Holmes? Is it the criminal who was practicing situation? on the corpses, maybe? Maybe they, they, they stole them to practice? Which corpses are missing? Ah, I don't know exactly, but I can make an exact list if you would like to wait here for a few minutes. Feel free to look around the room while you wait. It will bring back memories. Thank you, Andrew. Well, maybe he needs to go back to school. He can't even counter the fact that the body's been in the cold for, for making guesses on how long ago they died. It's here that students come to carry out their experiments. The last lesson must have been about the human heart. And for a class of beginners, I expect, as this diagram is rather rudimentary. All right. These wheeled trolleys are very handy for laying out surgical instruments. This rag is full of grease. It certainly wasn't used for a dissection. Was someone doing some mechanical work here? Mm. It's here that students come to carry out their experiments. This surgical instrument resembles a screwdriver. How amusing. It might come in handy. I will return it later. It's here that we steal come now. to carry out their experiments. We steal stuff. What else we got to look at? An encyclopedia of anatomy. A page on the human heart is dog-eared. Let's see. Okay. Hmm. I am missing some information. Like what? This wheel won't roll despite all of the added grease. Curious, as Holmes would say. Why? What's in it? This wheel won't roll. Do, should I use the screwdriver? That we got? A message. I'll be... Why the devil was it hidden here? Ethan Levy, seven years. Son of Sarah and Jacob Levy. Hospitalised May 18th. Syphilis treated with mercury and penicillin. Grave condition advanced stages. Possibly an imminent subject. Watch carefully. The magnet is in the heart. Use this board and erase it afterwards. Oh, <laughs> this is a puzzle. Vena cava superior. Oh. I want more puzzles like the one where I was putting pieces of paper back together. Okay, I'm writing this down. Truncus Paul. A 
An old prescription. Poor child, so young, yet terminally ill. Strange, someone scrawled something. Part of it is in Latin. These are instructions, it would seem. It was maybe the medical textbook that we were looking at. We're not looking at it again. They, they dogged the bit in the heart. The magnet is in the heart, it said. Oh, we, we kept it in the um, necromancy spell. <gasps> Gasp. Oh, look. Atrium Sinistrum. Truncus. I don't really get it. I don't understand. Okay, I need to get a jar of a flesh heart. Delicious, I'm sure. There is a heart in this jar. Based on its colouring, it hasn't been there long. And it looks like the drawing on the board. This jar contains two lids with combination locks. Okay. Maybe it's left. I honestly, I don't know how combinations works. Lock locks work in real life. I have this trouble with with Nancy Drew. <laughs> I don't know how they work. <laughs> yeah, it's a Victorian hospital. It's not good. So this is the V, so that's one. So, and it's going that way. So does that mean, wait, like, but then what do I do with this? That, so does that mean this way one? And then, I don't know if this is, Does this on this side as well? That that way eight? I I don't know. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh no, Charlie was banned. No. Oh, but aorti. Oh wait. Five. Trungus. Ah, oh. unbanned. Good. Ah, oh. ah. Oh. See that's so now we think of Lexi as benevolent. I'm guessing that was not right then. Or maybe this one. Maybe it's just this. So that one, one. And then Valve Aorti, which is five. Oh, uh. No, that's. This clock's Look, confusing. There was a bit of ah! paper stuck between the two lids. Okay. I'll have it. Message from the heart. 
I could have guessed Lexi joined. <laughs> yeah, we believe you. Banning Charlie. Char Char. Okay, and then this one. And then we do it again. Atrium Sinistrium 8. U on 8. Valva Aortai. Wait. Valva Aortai. No. Wait, Atrium Sinistrium. And Truncus. Where's Truncus? Two. This and then this one on two. Incredible! Someone I did has it. hidden a magnet in this heart. But to what end? <laughs> I only found out that Charlie was banned, and you said, "Heh." Uh, so you were looking into it to see why Charlie was in trouble. <laughs> also, hello, Lexi. You were like, you wanted to revel in Charlie's trouble. As if I would ever ban Charlie anyway. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> magnet. Magnet isn't in, in the heart. Okay, magnet for what? But what's the magnet for? I have a magnet. Nothing of interest here. Oh, it was desk six, maybe? Yeah. Incredible. There is a magnet with a hook behind this pane of glass. I am in need of something. I am Incredible. in need. Incredible. There is a magnet with a hook behind this pane of glass. I am in need of something. Me too. I'm in need of a chocolate cake. Okay, what's this? Oh my Christ. Oh, we don't want them to get in contact? Like... Oh. Oh my God. So, what? <laughs> I don't like the noise, it's making me flinch. So... If... Oh my god. Where now? I don't like it. Oh. I'm blinking every time this happens. So I know. So we get to there. That's all right. I don't even know what the purpose is. Have we got to get them to touch? Go get them to smooch. Or back to over each other, so they've got to go to each other's sides. Oh, okay. I don't think they can touch either of them, can't touch the thing, right? A side. Which is why we keep failing here. Is that it? They can't touch the side. And if we get this one. Oh Christ. Oh. 
I don't even know what I'm supposed to be doing. But cannot touch the solid sides. This doesn't doesn't help. That didn't touch. That was nowhere near. You absolute cheat of a game. What was that? I'm gonna get angry. You won't like me when I'm angry. It literally says they're allowed to touch. I don't understand. Right, it's sitting up time. It's serious. You can you can just pick either one of them up, but it was I just thought it would be easier to pick the bottom one up to move it through this section. Okay. There, all done. Holmes couldn't have done better himself. I don't know what we need that for, but that's fine. A hole. I can make out something inside, but how to get it out? Okay, that's what I need a hook. A hole. Oh, uh, I've I got a hook. Something inside, but how to get it out? I will need a hook. I've got a hook for you. I found it. Hmm, a coded message. I do believe I will need Holmes. We'll need Kona, the code breaker. Here is the list, John. The missing corpses are those of a woman, 40 years old, beginning of August. Yeah, and they're women, they're practicing. 55 years old, two weeks ago. And it's recently, the a criminal woman. practicing. And these corpses had nothing in common except that they didn't have any apparent lesions. All of this is very troubling. Well, I think that I have all of the information possible. And I promise that I will do what I can to clear up this business. I think your students are up to no good. My friend, and in the name of our friendship, please don't cause a stare. To be sure. Thanks again. Did his accent just change? I must thank you, John. Don't, don't to cause a stare. To to date and say hello to your charming wife for me. Count on me, Andrew. Why does his accent change mid sentence? To find this rogue that Watson dubbed Bluto, <laughs> he may be able to provide information on Doctor Tumblety. This lead what is this game? is well worth following. I must return to Whitechapel, but it would be better if I did so incognito. Am I going to go and dress up? There was a disguise. Yeah, I'll put it on. This should do the trick. Wait, it's Honestly, that's what Sherlock Holmes does. Everyone thinks Sherlock Holmes is cool, but Sherlock Holmes just dresses up <laughs> to solve murders in ridiculous costumes. Let's go. 
Let's go to the wasp's nest. Honestly, he doesn't fit in here at all. Listen to his voice. Let's go to the wasp's nest. Yeah, he's famous for dressing up. Sherlock Holmes. What will it be? Hmm, I have nothing to ask. Uh, hello, I'm just your neighbourhood ruffian. Hmm, Good to meet you. Here. I'm just a gas man, a gas boy. Hmm, there's something here. I need something. The tongs? Am I going to pry the floorboards up? I've got a knife as well. Hmm, there's something here. I see a jewel. It's fallen between the floorboards. This one? Is this one I'm after? I do love a slide puzzle. If this is what this is. I can't slide that though. Nope. Why won't it let me slide this bit? I don't like this slide. Okay, it's a slide puzzle, but you can only slide some things. <laughs> it's the worst, basically. I guess maybe it can only go down. Honestly, I have no idea what's going on because I can only move some of the pieces. Okay, there we go. Result.
This is a lot. The only way that can go is by going there. How do we get this out? Like that. Now what? <laughs> a there we go. inscription. Going by the length of the chain, it must belong to a child. Hello there. You looking for a gas man? Hello. Are you really a gasser? You sure it isn't a bobby? I am totally a well, gas man. If you don't need me, I'll be on my way then. I've already been paid up. Stay. Who paid you? A doctor. Marston, I think he was. He told me you'd talk to me about a foreigner name of Tumblety if I did you a favour. Right, mate. Might happen. What is it you need me to do then? Listen to me. At the end of what? Yeah. Just, has he tried reaching in house, and going like that? Opposite Finley's boarding house. Upstairs in the mess where the gas pipes are, you'll find a sack with something heavy inside. I if did it at least. It, you regret it here. You find it, you bring it here, and you don't tell us so, right? Got it. And then you'll tell me about this tumble tea so that I can report back to the dock? Yeah. Hello, Doctors I'm just your people. working class man. And since you is here, it's because he'll move mountains for his American. Me? I don't know much. But you can tell him that he'll have to talk to Squibby. He seems to know lots about plenty. When you he come knows lots about sack, plenty. Good. I'll tell you what he needs to tell Squibby so that he snitches on the yank to him. Snitch, snitch, Believe snitch. Believe me, mate. It's as explosive as ten miles worth of gas in your damn pipes. Right then, Goodbye. I'm off. Go. Give me some air. I could arrange for the police to come down here and arrest this thug, but he seems pretty tough and would probably be a lot less cooperative than if I play along. He seems it's pretty tough. It's best I handle this myself, including meeting the mysterious Squibby. Okay, let, we should save in case this crashes. Okay, and then I am going to burp. To stretch my legs. Stretch my little leggies. Stretch your little leggies.
Hello? Hello? You, you're going to go to Tesco, but you didn't in the end. What time did... Why not? Were you going to get something good? <laughs> really? Finny, get out of the way. Hello. I got myself a sandwich. That's why I took a bit, a bit, a bit long. It's chicken and stuffing sandwich. What a dog. It is pretty good. a little late but the clock's going back has made me hungry because I guess usually it would be five and then I'd be having my tea in an hour so I'd usually wait but two hours I can't wait <laughs> Finny's here to lick the crumbs up off my lap. And now he wants to leave. Because there's no food. Okay. Let's go. Go be a gas man. We're a professional. Let's see what puzzle this is. It's the abandoned house that Bluto pointed out to me. He must have set up his hideout there. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, There's a strange smell I mean, I'll be the gassy building. boy after the stuffing. It'll be me. Closed. Darn it, they locked this. Good day, Finley. Ah, uh, good day, sir. Have we met before? It's me, Sherlock Holmes, but I don't want it to be known that I'm here. Can I count on you? Certainly, You're breaking Mr. in, Finney. Holmes, I shall be as silent as the grave. I'll have to shut that door because it's cold, you know. You're stuck in here forever. Your tenant, Dr. Cumberty, is he here? I don't think so, but go and find out. Finny! Good boy, you having to lie down? There we go. This is what I got Finny from Barcelona. <laughs> Hey. He loves it. It would seem you've been having some gas problems. 
Don't talk to me about it. The problem is from the abandoned house not far from here, but nobody has come to take care of it. Perhaps I could go and take a look. Do you have a ladder? No, but I think in the pile of wood under the stairs there is one in pieces. And if you also need something from the scrap heap, some old tools or who knows what, feel free to take it, Mr. Holmes. But leave the dishes in good condition. Okay. Thank you, and goodbye. Goodbye, Mr. Holmes. This old cloth could be used as a mask. I must ah. mess my makeshift mask. Finley's ladder is smashed to pieces, but all the parts appear to be here. Some old nails. They may come in handy. This must be a piece of the ladder. This is disgusting. <laughs> I disapprove. Where's the rest? This lead pipe could help me to repair the gas lines. Okay, good stuff. A broken hammer. I will have to find a handle. Part of a perfume atomizer. This lead pipe could help me to repair the gas lines. I need this that. must be a piece of the ladder. This lead pipe could help me to repair the gas lines. Part of a perfume atomizer. It's going to be for our gas mask, is it? A heap of rusted iron crockery. This must be a piece of the ladder. Okay. Me? Gassy boy? I'm the gassy boy. Water. Finny is. Oh, we can moisten our mask. There, this damp cloth will do for a mask. Okay. Any other pieces of ladder? We're going to go in through the window. Can't get any more onto the Thing. Do we have all the pieces? This window appears to be the only way out. Okay. So how do I do this? Stick. Little stick. Small planks. This window appears to be the open. How do I start building it? I guess I need another pole. I only have one pole, I think. How is your investigation? Thank you and goodbye. Although I took them all. We're going to the guide. I ain't faffing around with the ladder.
This is to combine stuff in your inventory. I, I don't have stuff. I don't have things and stuff. How do you combine anyway? You've never, we've not had to combine stuff before. Little stick. Hammerhead. What's going to be at? Okay, ladder parts. What kind of guide this is? It says about half a dozen. H how many exactly? <laughs> Come on. Oh, do I drop, drag and drop? There we go, okay. Two wooden poles, I see. <laughs> wow. And then these. Like that. Ladder. Yeah. Heck yeah. Okay. Wait, I think I've got the ladder now. I hope this ladder will support my weight. Don't we all? <laughs> Shall I select the wet cloth that we're gonna use for a mask? Let's go. My cloth mask won't make much difference, but I'll be able to inspect the room for a few seconds. Okay, how long? <laughs> how actually I though? Something. The leak must have been sudden. Even the animals didn't have time to escape. Oh. Someone left here in a hurry, presumably because of the gas leak. Can I die? I'm kind of interested to find out. Like The leak must have been sudden. Even the animals didn't have time to escape. I need something. What? What do we need? I don't have a key. I need something. Can I die? Yeah. I'm curious. I need something. I don't know. What's this perfume thing for? This iron bar will help me. Okay, yeah, that'll do. Good stuff. Okay. The leak is coming from here. The satchel is behind these pipes. This explains why the thug wanted someone who knew about gas. He must have hidden it there in great haste and broke the pipes in the process. The satchel seems to be quite stuck. I don't think I can get it out without passing out. For good. I need a more suitable mask. The kind used by tanners would do nicely. Tanners, you say? How do I leave? I know one of them. Oops. Well, I know a cobbler. How do, sir? Hello. I'm sorry How to do? say, but I'm closing. This man seems wary. I must find a way to win his confidence. Uh, can you not just say, hello, I am a customer and would like to buy a mask? How about that? What do you mean? Oh, this, probably. 
How do, sir? Hello. I'm sorry to say, but I'm closing. I am here because I found this. Abraham's beard. The son of one of my neighbors he was beaten in the street a few weeks ago and it was stolen from him. If you would give it to me, I promise to return it to him and get you a reward. Money doesn't interest me. Who are you, sir? And what do you want from me? I'm a friend of Dr. Watson's. Uh, you know him, don't you? In that case, welcome. Dr. Watson is a great man, and I would be pleased to help one of his friends. I need a mask. You work for leather and perhaps even tan it yourself. I believe tanners wear special masks to protect themselves from the toxic emissions given off by the vats used to soak the leather. I have a gas leak to fix, and I won't survive without something effective to protect myself with. Go see my cousin Abraham, who has a pet shop a little further down the road. Tell him that Isaac sent you. <laughs> That's me. Okay. I'll be off now. My regards to Dr. Watson. He's obsessed with Dr. Watson. Don't blame him. He's much better than Sherlock Holmes in this game anyway. <laughs> Down here or somewhere else. Also, a pet shop in Victorian Whitechapel. Yikes. Can we get a pet? I have no reason to go that way. Oh. Shush. <laughs> Quiet, you. Quiet, whoever's screaming. I'm trying to find a murderer. In the 22nd century, I have not. Who's Sherlock Holmes in the 22nd century? Even more annoying than this. Where's the pet shop? Silly cartoon. I've never heard of it. <laughs> I'm looking for a pet shop. I'm looking at the guide because I can't be bothered running around all these streets again. Uh, uh, uh. He will direct you to Abraham's pet shop. At the pet shop. It doesn't tell you where it is. <laughs> This guy is the worst. I know. I'm so cringe. Abraham, it should say on the on the thing. I'm such a cringe lord. He said down the road, which implies it's down here, but I don't think it is. <laughs> like see best mod 6 out of 10, true. Like see best mod six out of ten. <laughs> Look up where the pet shop is. Cause I have to do it on my phone and it's annoying. Oh, 
Oh, it's opposite. Apparently. This is opposite Isaac's business. I don't, I don't think so. I'll prove you wrong yet, guide. I found a new guide on Mystery Manor. IGN are cancelled. Really? Opposite? Opposite? I don't think so. I mean, unless this is it. They're closed though. It's not a pet shop. <laughs> it's not what I'd call a pet shop. A butcher's. Yeah. I mean, at least it mentioned it, I guess. It just mentioned it in the wrong place. Oh, they, they have pictures of it, so maybe I'll be able to work it out from the pictures. Well, this woman stopped screaming. Yeah, that person's definitely not there. I mean, this looks like an entirely different game. <laughs> okay, Lise. Leave the shop. Ah, unintentional E. Okay, apparently it's this one. This is a pet shop. Yeah, we're going in. Okay, I found it. The guide was not bad after all. I mean... England has neither of these animals. This isn't a pet shop. Hello, sir. Hello. Do you have a mask? You must be Abraham Solonovich. I, I came on behalf of your cousin, Isaac. He said that you might be able to help you me. Can you I need a good mask to protect me from gas emissions so I can repair a leak. Yes, it should help you. But I let it drop into the big snake cage. That's Finny wagging his tail. They are very dangerous beasts. If you can I hear don't that. know how to retrieve it. But you must be equipped to deal with these creatures safely, surely? Of course, but I broke my hook. It should be over there. If you succeed in getting that beast from its cage, you will be doing me a great favour. He wants to leave. <laughs> Turn the light on. Magic. The magic of light. Okay. Wait, this one? I need something. What, what have we got? A knife. I say we, we knife it. I need something. We're not allowed to stab the snake. Our wet cloth. What our perfume atomizer? I need something. Um, Have you let the snake out of its cage? This cage must do to hold the snake. I don't know what to do with that perfume thing. Oops, wrong thing selected. No, I can't do that. No, I mustn't. Okay. 
Oh! This cage must do to hold the snake. I got a different cage. I got another cage. Oh! Let him out! I'll take him! I have the broken hook. I can repair it, but I'll need some materials. Perhaps I'll find some material at Isaac's that will be of use. Perhaps I'll find some material at Isaac's that will be of use. Somebody rescue that pup. Um, hello, I'm here for stuff and things. I don't know if I need to talk to you or if I can just take it. <laughs> I need a few items for your cousin Abraham. May I borrow them for you? Of course. You're welcome. Thanks. This should do the trick. Yeah, I mean, we left we left it the other day as well. It's been a whole day since we discovered the gas leak. This may come in handy. Yeah, I was going to say we need more wire. <laughs> Thread. No, no, well, it's not for me apparently. This should do the trick. The heck is that? Metal shank. Oh, nice tongs. Snake pole. <laughs> I've got myself a snake in pole. I need something. Okay, if we I f I feel like the snake should go in that one personally. No, I can't do that. Well, just put it on the floor. Uh, get that raccoon out of here. Uh oh, parrot. Mm -mm -mm -mm. How much is that dog in the window? The one with the waggly tail. How much is that dog in the window? I do hope that dog is for sale. Okay, we've got the cages, I think. This cage must do to hold the snake. Oh, another cage in the mix, okay. Okay, it's the tight mesh cage we want. This one. Good. Good stuff. This cage will do the trick. The mesh is small enough. There we are. Magnificent. 
if I may ask, why is it you have such equipment? I haven't always had a pet shop, my friend. I was a butcher for many years. But I wasn't serious enough to be a real meat man. And I was looked down upon in the community. I found myself carting carcasses from the slaughterhouse. A repugnant job in which you catch vile illnesses. And it breaks you before you're out of your thirties. Thus, I had the idea to make this mask with a sort of filter. And it worked. Since then, I have quit that work. And with my little savings, I started this business. I lived through the death of thousands of animals. Now I am devoted to their lives. Um, if I don't think so. I could sell you a little canary, for he, example. He can't be a real no, meat man. You. Let's return to the boarding house. I want that doggy. I want to rescue him. Let me take him with me. Bite you, vile snake. Let's get my, my mask equipped and then go to map. It's best we don't think about it too much. He, he, he's clearly not in it for the love of the animals. <laughs> I need something. Uh, let's repair the gas. Like, can these not just be one item? Must. I need something. Like what? The leak must have been sudden. Even the animals didn't have time to escape. I need something. I need something. I need something. Whatever it is, we don't have it. What about this? I need something. A lighter. <laughs> uh... I need something. I need something. I don't have it. What am I missing? Yeah, I meant to fix the gas pipes, but maybe I don't have everything. I think I'm supposed to turn the perfume atomizer into something. Maybe. I don't think I have all the stuff I need. I'm just trying to look in this guide. It's really not helpful that I can't tab out of these games. I have to search it on my phone.
Uh, yeah, I should have everything. I don't really understand. I need something. I don't know what to do. And now chat's broken. I can't see you at all. Oh yeah. Mm. I've got no clue what I'm missing, but on the guide there's an extra piece. This is really stressing me out because I can't search the guide properly. Okay, I think there's something in the room that I'm missing. Okay. Let me up. Or is it I do have to have my mask? I can't get back up there now. Yeah. That, that's what I'm saying. A useful tool for opening safes, I would assume. The satchel, rather heavy and firm. Okay. Now this is where we see if we can die. <laughs> There isn't enough gas. There isn't enough gas. The pressure isn't high enough. I don't put the them. gas can escape through this. Uh, like that. There isn't enough gas. The there isn't enough gas. The pressure isn't high enough. There isn't enough gas. The pressure isn't high enough. There isn't enough gas. The pressure. I don't think the pressure is high enough. The gas can escape through this nozzle. The gas can escape through this nozzle. No pressure anywhere. Um, but I can't turn them either. Oh, you have to right click to turn them. Okay. Right. Just there we go. Oh my god. Uh I'm welding, I guess. should do this. How do I know when I'm done? How do I know when it's finished?
Um... I'm not gonna look this up how long I have to do this for. And the world is red, okay. It is red. Okay, it's already done. I just have to turn it off, I think. Okay, is that done? The leak must have been sudden. The satchel, rather heavy and firmly wedged, dislodging it will take a concerted effort and is better done in a safe environment. Oh, well, I thought I'd already done. I thought I'd already repaired it, to be honest, Sherlock. So this is going well. Yeah. I feel like. Elementary. This much talked about satchel is very The leak must have been sudden. Even the animals uh, didn't have how do I get in here now? Did I do it? Did I fix it? Oh I've got the satchel now, okay. There is still gas in here. Oh. Looking at the state of this cat, it won't survive much longer if it stays here. Come with me. Let's go to the wasp's nest. <laughs> I literally pick this cat up. Let's go to the wasp's nest. Well, we've got a we've got a cat now. We've got a pet. <laughs> it's just sat in the bag. There's no way of returning this fortune to that lout Bluto. I will give him the satchel, but with other contents. Hmm, something with the same weight. Oh, we're stealing it, are we? I thought we were just gonna... This? Full of crockery, the satchel makes the same noise and weighs about the same as if it were filled with silverware. Why wouldn't he check it? This is ridiculous. You've lost to me, Sherlock Holmes. I want to be Watson again. I need something. This is point and click nonsense. Pass the sack to me. Did you look in? I give you my word, but it won't belong to you until you tell me where Squivy is. Fine. The poor idiot was taken by the peelers the other day. I don't know why some chap started to screech about that he was the white chapel killer, but he ended up followed by an hysterical mob. In a flash, the bobbies had him rounded up and locked down. Do you mean at the local police station? Might, might not. But if you or the doc talk to him, tell him that about the kayak business. I'll forget our score if he rats on the yank. He'll know. Now, hand over the bag. I say, that's all a little bit wishy-washy. I'm not sure it's worth the satchel. Hey, don't shake it like that, moron. If you don't want to end up with a knife in the back, you'll get busy with the pipe. Yeah, Got we're it? trying to scam this Here, guy. take it. That'll teach me for being a good Samaritan. Honestly, how rude. I'd best be off now. Better to not be around when he opens the yeah, satchel. Surely he's immediately going to open it. I can't 
just waltz into the police station to ask if they've got Squibby locked up. I'll have to come up with a ploy to find out if he's actually there. Then I'll need to get the policeman to leave for just a few minutes so I can talk to the prisoner. Why can't we ask that? So, you little jackanapes. You want to ride on the big whirly? Hmm. Another day, perhaps, ma'am. As a matter of fact, I would like to know if a chap I know called Squibby happens to be in this This is so 2008. And the policemen are inside. Information? Yes, but time is money for me, you know. Here are a few guineas. So, Squibby. I'll tell you everything that I know, my ducky. Nothing. <laughs> I know nothing about whether Squibby is there and I don't give a damn. The bobbies don't whisper sweet nothings to me, like the girls in the nice places. And now I'll get lost before I get all worked up. Hey, if you have something to offer to a lady, I could tell you a little bit more, maybe. Well, that's quite enough of that. that. <laughs> the girls from the nice houses, that monster. Oh. Danny must have been referring to establishments like Miss Bella's that Watson told me about. One second. Oh, well, I am going to end there then because I have to turn my hot water on if I want to shower and the hot water is ready and I can't, I can't lose it. I can't let it cool. It's a very dumb feature of my house. And also, I think that's quite enough of this game for today. <laughs> it's frustrated me. It's made me laugh. It's made me smile. But yeah. I will finish this before Dragon Age comes out. Then we'll be playing the new Dragon Age next week, which I cannot believe. So I need to finish that game before I go away for my birthday, which is the 16th of November. So I guess we're going to be streaming quite a bit. <laughs> so I will see you then. Well, so at some point next week. Maybe, I don't know, maybe tomorrow, maybe the day after. I'll see you then. Bye!